Hello fellow officers of Brooks City PD. Welcome, and we're going to be looking at the first episode here, which will explain how to set up your game of Brook City. And there's a few things that I'm going to do that are for demonstration purposes that will be a little bit different. A few things like the map that I'm going to use are going to look a little bit different. Yeah, but that's okay. You can download if you want. I made a little mini map file and a little legend. If you are having problems finding locations or seeing how spaces are set up, then this should give you a little bit of help. You can find it in the uh, Brooks City Fans Facebook page in the uh, photo section, or you can go to Board Game Geek and look it up there. It'll also be in the uh, photo section and in the forums under rules for uh, Brook City. I am not affiliated with Blacklist Games. I'm not an employee of them. Uh, I do make these videos because I enjoy the game and, and I, hopefully I won't have to keep repeating that too often but uh, I did help them out just for full disclosure with uh, videos on uh, they never asked me to do the videos I just did them myself because I enjoyed the game but videos on Street Masters and then I helped them out uh, with some stuff for Aftershock so that being the case all that's out of the way who I am and all that kind of cool stuff if any of the rules that I tell you are wrong You'll know they're wrong because the Saddlers or Scotty Mick will have contradicted me and posted in the comment sections or in the uh, posts that exist in um, the Facebook pages. If you are looking for Brook City, just to get this off the, off the bat, as of 2019, there is no current Kickstarter going on for it, but there probably will be some supply, a very limited amount of supply available on their web page. If you are just now hearing about Brick City and you're not sure what's going on and you want to be notified because you haven't already been following Blacklist's website, here are some links for you to follow them on social media and they will notify you of upcoming games and when Brook City, UltraQuest, Street Masters, anything else they come up with is available on their store. So that's the quick overview of things. Why don't you break out your manual if you have one. If you don't, you can download it from their website. And uh, let's follow along and set up your first game. We're going to be looking at the Slain Diplomat is our case. First thing you need to do is find a space for your board. It is a pretty large board. If you play other games like Kingdom Death that have large boards, then you probably have a table that will fit. If you did get the um, play mat, then you need a squarish table that is fairly large. I got the uh, basic picnic style tables from Costco and they don't fit, but the regular cardboard board will fit on that. So you need to set yourself up some play areas. For every player you've got, you need to have a play area set aside for them. And even if you're gonna do solo, you need to have a case area and a boss area set aside. So for demonstration purposes, I've changed the way that the threat area works and I'm going to be putting little tokens of the cop faces so you can see which cop it goes to. When you're looking at the board, it's more effective to be able to see where all the criminals are at one time as opposed to just what's in a particular threat area for the purposes of demonstration. So that red strip is a combination of both threat areas for the two cops that I'll be using in this demonstration. For the green section, that's where all the case stuff goes in. If you played Street Masters and are familiar with it, cases are similar to stages and the criminal area is similar to the boss area for uh, Street Masters. There are many, many differences and especially the way objectives work and objectives don't exist in Brook City. They're called clues, but in the regular dictionary term of objective, how do you win the scenario, how do you win the game? Well, you solve the clues and they lead you to solving the case. In Street Masters, you beat the boss and that's how you finished. It didn't matter what was going on with the stage, you just had to beat the boss. It's switched around in Brook City, so it doesn't matter what tactic you're using, the criminals will constantly foil you, cause you extra stress. The more stress you take, then you uh, will no longer be able to work at Brook City PD. That's kind of the, the way the system works. You're trying to solve it, and if you get too stressed out, then you can't do it anymore and somebody else will have to take the case on, or 
you'll have screwed up so much that no one can solve the case. So basically, um, you take out the idea that just punching a boss in the face is going to solve everything, which I kind of like. Uh, the clues for each mission you'll be given right away. Uh, for this one, we're going to be looking at the Slain Diplomat. A lot of the other people in the Board Game Geek uh, forums have said this is probably the best demonstration one, and I have to kind of agree. Uh, a lot of the things you need to do are pretty straightforward. And we're going to be using Slade Harper, so you can see the back of his deck is sitting there in the red section. And we've already laid some cards out in the green section. I'm going to show you why those ones are there and how you would approach any case in general uh, when you first pull it, something out of the box. So the first step is going and fishing out the card that has the case name on it and a setup side. It's going to give you an indication as to which cards are going to be required to be put into play first. Right here it's saying remove all clue cards from each, or sorry, each of the clue cards from the case deck and put each into play. And then shuffle the remaining and flip this card. The reason why it says flip this card is because on the back they always have more instructions and typically an activate that will occur during the case step. This is very similar to the stage step that would have happened in Street Masters if you're familiar with that. This particular case doesn't seem to have one of those activates, but it does tell us some things that are going to happen while we're playing. First off, during the turn, a cop near an inactive clue may gain control of it for free. Well, we're going to start with everything active, and when we flip them inactive, that's when you can get it. Just says you have to be near, you don't have to be on the spot, you can be adjacent to it. That's what near means. Each time a cop successfully encounters a target, they may place one of their hunches on any clue in play. Well, not just a clue for cards, but it's a clue to tell us how this uh, case is going to run. We're putting hunches on things, which means we need to generate a lot of hunches. So as we consider if we want to use an ally or not, what cop we're going to use, we may be thinking about the types of cops that have the most capacity to generate hunches since we're going to need some extra to put on those clue cards. It also says if the cops control all five clue tokens, the cops win. So that is our condition. Uh, we're going to be flipping all of our tokens over and uh, taking control of them. And then finally, we're going to see our lose condition, which is if no cards remain in the case deck at the start of the case turn, the cops lose. So basically, we have a time limit on how much um, or how many turns we can take. Now we're looking at the slain diplomat. Now what would it mean if it runs out? Well, maybe they got away. Maybe all the, the key evidence went cold. Uh, there's a reason in the storytelling of each of these decks and each of these cases that gives you a little bit of more information uh, about uh, what the meaning of the case is and, and meaning of the cards that you're going to pull, including the meaning of the clue cards. So this is a card in this instance that does not need to go into the um, play area because it's not going to activate anything but you're still going to need it close by so we'll be referring to this as we play through but i'm not going to put it in the play area because it's uh doesn't have an activate what i will do though is as you we saw from the other side is we have to put all the clue cards into place so let's take a look at what the clue cards look like I'll go ahead and start off by throwing them all out here into the case player area where they belong and we'll look at them very briefly. The blue card is the murder scene and we can see that for each clue token the cops control reduce the resistance by one. So there's a lot of resistance uh, for each type of encounter and it's got a you know good amount of uh, health on the murder scene. It's important that if you are a police officer you look at the scene of the crime with a lot of care and uh, you glean as much information from it as possible. So it can be a very difficult scene and that's kind of what this represents with those resistances. That the more we find out about the other parts of the crime, the more that the scene will make sense. So it's more about that storytelling part. It has an interact, so that means if we go next to the murder scene, we can spend our action and discard one hunch from this card to place one progress on this card. That's kind of neat. You can spend the hunches, which um, are a type of currency that uh, could be considered the investigative ability 
of the police officer themselves, the detective themselves, and is just a uh, an indicator of their experience. So you're spending that experience to make this uh, a little bit less difficult and to investigate the scene. That's why damage in this context is considered progress and called progress for the game. Bust means once you've put all of the progress that is equal to uh, the requirement, in this case, it's three per player for our two cop game, it will be six. Uh, you flip this card and then remove it from the game. And that means that you're going to change the token over. Um, this particular uh, flipping of this card is only really going to help us uh, at the end to solve the crime. So this would be a card that we're going to kind of hold off on a, for a little bit. Uh, putting too much progress on because it will get cheaper as we uh, complete the objectives uh, uh, and requirements on the other cards. So that was for the blue. Now let's go ahead and look at the green. While this card has less than uh, 1p hunches on it, so 2 in our case, it gains plus 2 resistance where the walkie-talkie. Right now it would have 0. So the first couple of hunches, especially if we have a cop that uses walkie-talkie attacks, then uh, we're going to be able to defeat it fairly quickly. It does have a lot of health in the context, requiring 4p progress, so 8 for us, in order to beat it. So it's one of the, the more difficult, it's much more difficult than a regular crime to beat. And it is disrupted syndicate funding. The reason why it could be so difficult is you have to go and get a bunch of subpoenas or um, other things the, for a judge to sign for warrants. A lot of paperwork involved with getting uh, syndicate funding um, disrupted. So that's, uh, that's again, part of the storytelling. We're talking about a slain diplomat. There could be some other uh, channels or other crazy things going on that uh, would make it much more difficult than uh, just arresting somebody. Let's look at a couple more cards. We've got the purple, which is the victim's remains. So that's the body. And the red, which is Buckles Mahoney. What could that possibly mean? Well, there's also a big difference between the two cards. So 5P with some resistances. Uh, what types of resistances? The one about reckless? You're not going to be reckless with the body, so the resistance would be pretty high. So that's another part of the uh, storytelling, and it takes place at the morgue. So all of that part makes sense. A cop cannot encounter this card unless they discard one hunch from it. That should be per turn, I believe. So every time you go in to mess with the remains, you're going to have to spend some currency. You're going to have to have some thoughts on the body. So uh, you need to kind of know what you're looking for or spend it in order to be observant. So that part makes sense. The body is the domain of the doctor, not necessarily the police officer. So it makes some sense that you're going to need those hunches. Now, one cop can generate the hunches, place it on the card, and then another cop can spend it. That's part of the benefit of having more than one uh, cop as you play through, even if you're going to do it solo. And if you notice, Buckles Mahoney, though, doesn't have any of those resistances and doesn't have a health score. There's no amount of progress going to do anything for that. His interact says you discard a hunch from the card and then you go look for another card called witness account and attach it. Then if there are uh, two copies in our instance, or one if you're doing solo, four if you've got four players, so 1p copies of witness account, attach the card, flip its clue token, and uh, pull it out. So this could be an early one to pick up because it only really requires two hunches. So uh, fairly early on, we could press this uh, concierge or um, bellboy or whatever it is Buckles Mahoney does for a job at the Capitol Hotel. It would make sense, though, if we have a slain diplomat that they had to stay at the hotel because they're from another country or from another city or whatever uh, the thing is for them to be a diplomat visiting Brook City. So we have one more to look at. And finally, we've got the yellow uh, coin here, token for the Relic Woods and the dumped revolver, possibly the murder weapon, right? So that's why it's a clue. And we're gonna spend four hunches, so 2P in this circumstance, uh, to flip the coin and to its inactive side and remove the card from the game. It's fairly easy. It's uh, a little bit more difficult than the one at the hotel. And maybe that's because we're going to press the, uh, the red token, uh, Buckles Mahoney, and get a little more information out of him early and then go storming off into the woods 
and have to search around. So it's not really a thing where you're doing uh, reckless or uh, other types of actions that the, the cop does as their type of attack in this game. Instead, we're just spending their investigative ability. So we're spending the hunches to find the dumped revolver in the woods. Makes sense on a storytelling basis. What's it want us to do? Well, we can only do it after we've encountered a suspect. Who is our suspect? Suspects come from the criminal deck. So we need to figure out who's gonna be our big bad. In this instance, it's Slade Harper. It doesn't necessarily mean in the terms of the story that Slade Harper is the one who killed the slain diplomat. It just means that they might have some information, right? So the concierge maybe directed us to uh, the suspect, Slade, and Slade's like, oh, I don't know, but maybe I saw something out in the woods. I don't know where you go look or whatever the thing is. So there is some storytelling going on. You could be suspicious if you want and pretend in your head if you want it to be that the suspect is the one that uh, creates the crime, but they don't have to be. The, uh, the suspect in the criminal deck is kind of like your foil. Um, they're just running around the town. They're suspicious. That's why they're suspects but uh, the actual crime is a little bit separate from them. It's not tied to the criminal deck and that's what makes it modular. So I've placed the uh, case cards all in the green area. I've put little markers for counters and different things for the purpose of um, demonstration. And this is gonna tell us you know, that the progress tokens are the ones that go on these cards, not the stress tokens that will go on the cops and kind of give an indication as to where things show up. The uh, Slade card, right now we're just showing the back because we're using that as a threat area. And my uh, my boards will be all set up so there will be um, a separate area for the boss, a separate area or suspect, and a separate area for each of the individual cops. And then we'll look back here with uh, what's going on for the stages. Speaking of the stages, it looks pretty bare right now. We're gonna need to add some things. The uh, cards each said a location and that's where you're supposed to put the active side tokens up. Active side is the light side, dark side is when they're inactive. And uh, we need to place a suspect and all of that information was on the cards. So I'm gonna just drop them here on the map. If you want, rewind a little bit and you can see on each of those cards or hopefully you're playing along and you can compare um, with your own cards and see uh, see where they go into place. So everything's placed on the board and you can see how I'm designating things. You can see the tokens and uh, the red mark that's around the uh, Slade suspect. The red token holder, um, not token holder, the little plastic ring, that's supposed to go on your um, suspect figurine and the black ones will go on the crimes and the blue ones will go on various cops and you can use them as cops and you can also use them uh, for your allies depending on how you uh, want to play everything. It's a little inconvenient to swap between a single set of enemies every single time you play. You may want to reserve the black ones for rivals uh, or something else just because it's a little easier to put it on one or two rivals than to do uh, the full complement every time you want to switch between criminals. Um, so we're going to switch over, speaking of criminals, to the criminal side and see if there's anything special we need to set up for Slade. Alright, we're over here on the criminal side and you can see the suspect card, the progress token, that's for his health, the more progress that's put on him, that's essentially as if he's been damaged. And then there's the influence token, which uh, looks like a coin. Influence uh, affects you negatively. You do not want the suspects to get influence. You want to do everything you can to stop them because that will just end up being more and more stress and cause you to lose. The uh, difference here between Street Masters and uh, Brook City is that when you defeat the boss by bringing down their health, in this case, adding progress, they come back. They don't ever go away. You do not win by defeating Slade you win by solving the case. So it's a little bit of mitigation of uh, keeping the crime down in the city so that it doesn't stress you out too much. Uh, but mostly it's about just doing whatever you can to 
for this scenario generate the hunches you need in order to solve the case. So that's how we're going to be thinking about this. When you approach a new criminal deck that you've never seen before, you want to do it basically the same way as you did with the uh, stage card and read the, uh, the first card in the uh, suspect deck and see if there are any special conditions. So let's take a look at Slade a little more closely. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the setup card. First thing we see is place Slade in the Nightscape Theater, which is space F20, so that's where he's at. And then you search the criminal deck for an investor card and put it into play. Most of the criminal decks will have an asset of some kind. For Slade, those are investors. It doesn't matter which one you got, so if you want to search for one closer to where you want it to be, or where you think you're going to go, or it's your favorite picture, or whatever, then feel free to do all of that. Uh, the assets for his criminal empire um, is the one we're going to look at is Jack Elmore. It says we're supposed to put him at the bank, so maybe some type of bank teller. And he's got an activate. So this asset could be considered like a, um, a tactic for the uh, the boss it doesn't necessarily have to go into a criminal area or into a criminal deck um, as you can see the activate doesn't really have anything to do with the cops it has everything to do with uh, influence and other cards so it can be a little bit misleading even though you are going to put progress on it and defeat it as if it were a crime notice under Jack Elmore it says asset investor if it's an actual crime that goes in your threat area, it'll say crime and usually have a particular type. And those particular types are affected by other cards. If you see a card that says to put uh, something or influence on a crime, this would not be one as it is just an asset. So we have to be very particular, even though the cards look the same, they're not quite the same. And it says on the Slade Harper setup card that once Jack Elmore is in place, uh, as the investor that we're supposed to flip this card. Let's do that. And as you can see, Jack is now in the criminal play area. And I put some tokens there to denote the progress and any influence that goes onto the card. Uh, any other of the asset cards will go there, even though they look similar to the crimes, as I said, crimes will down into threat. Okay, so we got a card to flip. Let's do that. All right, on the other side, funding the syndicate, it says if this card ever has four influence on it, the cops lose. So it's talking about how the enemies, if they start uh, accumulating too much influence, then uh, you will have problems. Well, here's where you're going to have problems. Cops will lose. It doesn't matter what the mission is. It doesn't matter what the case is. It doesn't matter, um, I, like, you know, the modularity of it. Just whenever you see Slade, make sure he can't influence anything. Does this make storytelling sense? Well, if he's a businessman, especially a crooked one, and he's um, working with uh, government operatives and uh, bribing people and taking them to dinners and other stuff like that, then influence is how he gets to own the city. So it makes sense that he's you're trying to keep it down. What is the activate? Well, the activate happens because this card is gonna go into his play area. If an investor ever has three influence on it, discard three influence from that investor and Slade, gain, Slade gains one influence once per criminal turn. If Slade does not gain any influence, each cop that does not control a lead must either discard one hunch or suffer one stress. So this is going to be difficult in the sense that he's going to be causing you to constantly discard hunches because you do not want him to gain influence. So you're really going to need uh, a lot of help with those hunches. This is going to also be a problem thinking about the stress because in the beginning you're going to you need to use all those hunches on the uh, murder weapon and crime scene. So uh, you probably opt to take stress instead. There are some ways to get rid of it, um, but keep in mind it's, uh, it's your health basically. It's your mental health and whether or not you crack under the pressure of the job. So uh, there's no real loot cards. There is a lead. And as you chase the leads around the map, sometimes they can be pretty far away. You have to use the vehicles uh, efficiently in order to gain those leads. Then uh, if you do have a lead, then it can protect you a little bit. Um, having three influence turns on a investor, turns into one influence. 
on uh, the boss means that you have at least one or two turns in order to defeat each investor and keep them off the board. Since they are pulled from the criminal deck and they're only put into play uh, for free at the beginning, if you take the investor off the board, then you'll have a little bit of breathing room to not have to worry about that part so much and can pursue the case. So this funding the syndicate operation card is gonna go into the play area of the criminal. So there's no more cards called out on the setup card. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump into our selection of cops. I think for this one, we should look at the stretch goals box and look at Mallory. Or as I would like to think of her, bunch of hunch. So this is obviously inspired to some degree by Fargo. Um, but what we mostly care about is she has a decent amount of stress uh, capability at 11 and she encounters and gains a hunch every single time. Most of the time, if you didn't have some other type of hunch generator, you uh, would have to just wait to roll one. So being able to get one every single time she does an encounter using her basic action is great. Uh, she uses the hat for her attacks at that basic, you know, encounter type. So, uh, you know, the cards we encounter with her, the crimes we encounter with her, we want to make sure that they have low resistance to the hat. We need somebody else to think about, uh, you know, what we could possibly do to create more hunches. So let's think about our second fighter, or not fighter, but our second cop. For this particular mission, I'm gonna suggest partnering Mallory Dawson up with Lester Nelson. And the reason for this is a particular tactic he has called Words of Wisdom. Combining both of these together uh, as cops, you're gonna be generating at least two hunches per round if you can get their uh, this tactic card out uh, in an early stage. One thing to note is they both use the hat as their damage technique and Lester has pretty low health as far as the stress he can take. It's only eight. So uh, Mallory is going to be for the most part your tank and Lester, although he can discard stress every single time he does anything, he's going to be pretty fragile and you might want to use him more to run around the map and do different things. So. You do not by any means have to use these particular uh, people, but you got the stretch goals when you got the Kickstarter pledge. So you got the core box as well. They're available to you, at least for most of the people that are uh, picking this up before it goes to some type of retail. Um, then, uh, then you should have these cards available even if you didn't pick up the expansions. So I, I think it's a good option uh, when you are ready play the missions again mix things up challenge yourself and do things uh however you would want hopefully as random as possible to change up the uh the play style and the difficulty but uh for the very very first thing you do i would say give yourself some advantages and uh put lester in there to mitigate the stress and generate hunches and mallory just to be the uh, hunch queen so is that all we should be doing right now Absolutely not. There's lots of things left to do. As you can see, there's already a BCPD cruiser in Mallory's play area. That's because each cop starts with a regular cruiser. If you get the keys to the Kingdom expansion, you can start with a sprinter if you so choose, but uh, right now you're going to need a vehicle. Every cop starts in BCPD and uh, there's going to be a cruiser sitting outside waiting for you. If you have a four player game, you can put on whatever street you want. But uh, for right now, just go ahead and set these up with the two cops and their cars. For the purposes of demonstration, you can see I put the front of the car and I have the uh, cop face that goes along with it. For you, uh, the color of the cop car, if you paint it, leave some color of it still blue, red, yellow or green so you can tell them apart, your life will be a lot easier. And uh, what you would normally do is when the cop is in the car, you put the car on the board and then put the cop figure onto the vehicle card. Now let's take a quicker look at the vehicle card in detail. 
first thing this is a special car as you can see under vehicle classification where it says government special you need to separate out all of the special cars boats planes trains automobiles etc from the ones that do not say special the ones that say special can only be picked up at special locations on the mini map that i've got that we're using those locations are in red so next to the docks the airport and at bcpd that's where you're going to pick up your special cars and other uh, vehicles how do you know which one to use it says while this card is not controlled by a cop a cop in bcpd may commandeer this vehicle you can't use two people in the same car basically is what it's saying and uh, you have to pick it up at bcpd um, the uh, you can ditch this car as you can see there's a ditch effect uh, at any time during your turn and it will allow you to go to uh, the any brook city location that is really powerful you can go all the way around the map if you had your uh, sirens blazing and the, the the cherry top spinning um, you basically wrecked your car because you went so fast getting there but uh, you got there within your turn so you can do this before or after you do your normal move step which means you can exhaust while driving this vehicle you may move one for each crime in your crime area is the exhaust effect then ditch and then move so you get some extra speed and movement out of it um, so that part is up to you uh, how you choose to use it um, but that effect is available because you can commandeer another car once per turn so after you've ditched to this car if you're still in a street you can commandeer another car for use next time you won't get any new moves you won't be able to do anything else unless there's um, other functions available then uh, and you if you ditched uh, this second car you wouldn't be able to pick up another one until your next turn for the purposes of demonstration when i've utilized my commandeer function uh, there's a little car door that i put on top of the vehicle card and that's going to tell me that i've already used it you're going to be using a bunch of uh, characters to play solo i recommend you getting some coins some pennies dimes nickels or whatever so, or just uh, drawing on the inside of a coin capsule whatever it is that you want to do uh, in order to flip that says that you've utilized your um, commandeer action for the turn it just keeps everything simple it doesn't necessarily need to be coin you can do whatever it is that you want to do but uh, it makes it uh, easy to denote if you use that action versus say an exhaust which uh, you could use on some vehicles you need to be wrecking cars left and right in this game in order to be getting around Doing it on foot is just absolutely too slow. But now that you've got a car, where are you gonna go? Are you just gonna go token to token? Absolutely not. You got some options. There's different things you can be doing. First off, you need to be investigating leads. So once you get a tip off, you're at BCPD, you're like, hey, Mallory Dawson, we've got a case for you. There's a slain diplomat. Oh yeah, what have you heard about it? I don't know, but I think there's some information at this other place and the most analogous thing to the lead is loot from uh, Street Masters. These are little bonuses as you run around the map you can uh, pick up. You can get in and out of a car during each step of your regular action. So as you're moving around or you're playing a card or you're doing your action, you could get in and out of a car for free. So uh, as you move around, <laughs> utilize that free in and out of the car thing to uh to pick up the leads well how do we know where to pick them up we draw from the lead deck so make sure you have that handy and you uh, shuffle it up real good and pull a card so let's pull a card for us and see what our first lead is all right so what we pull is a little something to go from jeb's bottle shop has a little flavor text talks about catering to the populace uh so maybe it's a beer who knows what it is and uh you can discard it to uh ditch it to discard to stress so it's pretty helpful right because like i said it's similar to loot and that it helps you um do various things none of them hurt you they're all uh, beneficial to you in some way and a lot of 
the cases and criminals, if you do not have a lead with you, it can be detrimental. If you did have a lead with you, then you could get some type of bonus instead. So some of the cards uh, react differently depending on how many leads you have. You can have any number of leads. You should be spending them. Try to keep one on hand if you can with each of the, uh, the cops. As you pick them up, you go one by one. So as you find this uh, a little something to go in its uh, designated spot using the lead token, then uh, the next cops uh, in, your, in your group will have the opportunity to pick up another one. There's only one lead out at a time, and there are some card effects that will allow you to get bonus ones. Now that's not the only thing that you can pick up and start your game with. There are also these off-duty cards. These are things that don't have anything to do with the case, but are more like the personal life of the cop. And the more things you pick up, then just like if you were handling things in your personal life, it might clear your head and give you some hunches. It might, uh, by accident, provide some more leads. It might take away some stress. All of the things are gonna be helpful but they work in a little bit different way than the, the, the leads do. So let's take a look at one. Let's draw one for Mallory. All right, hubba hubba, she's got a hot date, okay? So what's her concern? Gotta pick up dry cleaning. She does it at Sudsy Duds and maybe something else. So she'll go to Pop's Pastries to pick up something sweet. And uh, what would a date be without a little wine? So she's gotta go to Jeb's Bottle Shop and get some wine. Well, we had the lead going to Jeb's Bottle Shop, which means uh, it might make sense for us to be able to kill two birds with one stone. So I could go to Sudsy Duds, which is on the upper part of the map, make my way to Pop's Pastries, and then head back and grab the lead and finish this off. If I did all of those things, I can discard only on uh, Mallory, two stress, gain two hunches, and draw two cards. There are some cards that uh, will allow each cop to do something cool. And uh, those are really powerful, especially in the middle part of the game when uh, stress can be getting pretty high and uh, you might be running out of cards in your hand or you might need some other type of function or uh, you're getting ready to spend all those hunches. So uh, be very careful, take a look at the bottoms of each of those uh, off-duty cards and see which ones are the, uh, the most useful. And, and like I did here, try to plan out how you're going to uh, achieve getting, uh, getting everything. So Sudsy Duds, if it is pretty close to BCPD, maybe what I'd do is ditch the cruiser, hit Sudsy Duds, commandeer a car, and use all the moves to get back to uh, BCPD so I can get another cruiser to uh, then do the same thing with Pop's Pastries and uh, then finish it off getting the bottle of wine. I wouldn't recommend using both of the cops to do the same strategy. I'd spend one uh, trying to mitigate the crimes, get something done, get at least closer to uh, the, uh, the clue tokens and getting those settled out and then having one person um, go out and try to uh, do the early leads and uh, get kickstarted off on off duty. As soon as you finish an off duty, you can draw another one. So this is something that can stick around for a while, but they're pretty far flung and they're not necessarily going to be anywhere near the, uh, the other stuff going on the board. And you're going to get to a point where you really need to stop looking at uh, off duty and pay attention to the case, especially one like this that has a timer. So uh, keep that part in mind. If you did gain two hunches, though, you can drop them off on uh, the uh, that concierge guy or on the the um, murder weapon, depending on where you're at at the time. And that'll be very helpful in encountering uh, those cards and getting them off the board. The more you get off the board, then you can also keep lowering the resistances on uh, that crime scene. So lots of different options, things to think about as you move your way through. So one thing to note is when you are doing off-duty uh, locations, they can be kind of hard to read on the map. So what I did is I made a little legend for you to uh, print out if you want, or you can have next to your uh, game, bring it up on your phone, whatever you want to do. It's on uh, Board Game Geek for Brook City in the file section, photo section. You could also look it up in the rules. Uh, I talk about it a little bit, and it's where I put the mini map 
and uh, the uh, um, uh, locations so you can look them up as you go through. Hopefully that will be helpful to you. Each one's a little different and uh, it'll help you uh, at least, I hope, locate where things are at on the map. Got a couple more options you can choose. If you want to make the game a little easier, you can put an ally into play. If you want to make the game a little harder, you can put some rivals into play. I think you can actually put both in. Like if you put in one ally, you should probably put in one rival. Uh, the rivals are fairly stationary, so you can kind of move around them. Uh, and then uh, the allies, if you can keep them alive throughout the, the whole game, especially in the end game, they get super powerful. Um, and the rivals, as soon as you defeat them, then they're off and they're not coming back. Uh, a couple things to know about allies, they also start next to you at BCPD. Then uh, you have to move them around on foot. That's kind of the thing that limits them, especially in the early part of the game, as to how useful they are. You can plant them, though, and walk them over towards um, something that you have to hit, right? Something you have to put progress on that's going to be difficult. So one of those clue tokens, if you um, are supposed to be dealing progress to it and doing encounters on it, then uh, that ally can go sit over there in every round for you, help uh, uh, you know bring it down. The other thing to note is if an ally, when they roll their dice, generates a hunch, the cop who's in control of that ally gets that hunch. So uh, in the circumstances like this, where we know that hunches are going to be really important and we want a lot of them, generating rolls for free is going to be really helpful. So we're going to want some allies if possible. Um, that part is just totally up to you and you can, you can decide on how difficult you want it to be or how non-difficult you want it to be. We're not doing a full playthrough, we're just doing setup, so just leave it where it is right now. The only thing that's left that you have to do is draw some cards. You open up with your initial hand, make sure you got a good mix. You want at least one tactic in there just to help yourself out. If uh, this was Lester's turn, then you'd want to mulligan and try and get that one tactic we were looking for for that hunch generation. Um, and then kind of go from there. The next thing you're going to do is get yourself ready with a turn card. That's what this one looks like. Everybody at your table should have one of these things. It's going to tell you what you can do. Uh, dispatch means you draw a criminal card that will go in your threat area. Act will allow you to move, play cards, actions, and different things. Um, the move action means you get to uh, either move or discard a stress. You can, you can move three spaces or uh, three streets, depending on if you're in a car or not. Uh, the card action just means you can put a card into play. If it's an encounter or an ability, then it goes to your discard. If it's a tactic, then playing that card goes into your play area. Hunch action means you get to get, gain a hunch. And interact means if you're next to a token or another card or something else that's going on in the, the game that has the word interact on it, then you can do whatever that is. Um, talked about in the very beginning of the video, uh, being able to flip an inactive or flip a token active or Flip an active token to the inactive side and then pick it up for free um, And the interact action will help you to do that um, Note up there. It says you may enter or exit a vehicle once during each step of the act phase Those are the ones that say step move step card step action step um, So depending on how you move that's in and out three times then comes the crime phase. So everything within your red area, um, everything within your threat area gets to use its activate ability. And then you draw a card and flip this one over. It does not include in here the ability to um, commandeer a vehicle. So that's why I was talking about using a token of your own to verify if uh, you're doing it correctly, because you may just be following along and moving from top to bottom and it's not telling you that you can uh, commandeer once per turn. It is once per turn that you can commandeer a vehicle. Then to continue, you would go to the criminal turn, 
which is in the first uh, play area we set up with the uh, suspect, everything in their tactic area um, that hasn't activate you would start with. And then you move on to the case turn. Since the case has a deck of its own, first thing you're gonna do is activate all the cards that say they have an activation that would be in the green area. Right now, we don't have anything. I don't think on this particular case there's anything, but on other ones there will be. Um, and you, uh, you wanna make sure to uh, do everything that it says to do in there. You probably won't enjoy most of the things that happen in, in the case. Uh, then you're gonna draw a new card and resolve anything that happens. Um, they usually can have different effects. If you were to draw the witness or uh, in this particular case, um, that witness card may get discarded and thrown into the discard pile or do a bunch of crazy other things. You may have to go take a stop at the morgue because somebody's falsifying records. All kinds of business. End phase, what's that? That means you just flip the card back and you go to the cop side. What if you have two cops? Do you have to play a criminal turn each time in between? No. You uh, have all the cops go and then you have the criminal and the case go. Um, there's such a thing as simultaneous mode that works a little bit better on, uh, on this game than it did on the original Street Masters. You have to learn quite a bit more and plan things out a little better and be with other people that understand the game uh, fairly well in order to do simultaneous mode in Street Masters. On this one, because the, the uh, suspects and the cases and crimes, they don't really move and they're kind of in fixed positions. It works a little better for simultaneous mode. So if you have a big group for people, you won't have to wait hours for people to, uh, to figure out what it is that they need to be doing. You can just jump on it right away. So let's see, what other common questions are there as we try to wrap this up? When you see a hunch symbol, which looks like a badge, and you're rolling dice, or you get the, the lockup uh, success and a hunch together, what does that mean? Anytime you see the hunch symbol when you roll dice, you can either get the number of hunches that you rolled, or you can turn them into extra progress. Um, so hunches can be utilized in lots of different ways, depending on the case, depending on the criminal, and um, that will uh, be determined totally by you as to how you want to use it. Uh, you always want to roll just in case you can get progress. Uh, what is a crit roll? A crit roll just means you roll more dice. Um, that's kind of how the saddlers work with exploding dice. They love that mechanic and that makes it so every time you roll something, you'll, uh, you'll have a little bit of forward progress instead of just being totally kneecapped by uh, the next dice roll, which is kind of nice to have. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can feel free to leave a comment wherever you see this. If it's on one of the Facebook groups on BGG or uh, on my YouTube channel, you can feel free to go ahead and, uh, and try to put something in there. Again, as I stated at the beginning, I'm not affiliated with Blacklist. So if you have a comment for them, go to their page and, uh, and put it uh, in there so they can see what you're looking for, especially if you're trying to find the game or any particular clue. Um, the Saddlers are uh, extremely helpful. So is Scotty Mick and everyone else from Blacklist. They go through all of the different comments for all the different uh, areas and try to help people out with rules as best they can. I will try to do a full playthrough later, but it takes a long, long time for me to animate things the way that I want to animate them. Um, so I can be as descriptive as possible. This uh, should be enough to get you started uh, setting up your game right out of the box and uh, have you play along. There are some good videos uh, from the first playthroughs with the Saddlers. They did not have the uh, multi hours to throw at uh, setting up in Premiere and putting everything together the way I have to animate all the pieces for you. Um, it took me about a month to get everything set up for you guys. But if now that you have it all set up, if you want to go play along with one of their videos, uh, that will be in Blacklist's YouTube channel um, for you to check out and should be pretty helpful. Have a good one.